In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get a perfect straight edge so you can do long miter folds or just join two boards together that are way too long for you to pass through your joiner safely and effectively. So let's get started. Okay guys, so really quick, that didn't actually happen. The photo that you see as the thumbnail that has happened to me years ago when I was making a giant dining room table. As I was passing the boards through the joiner on edge, because they were so heavy and thick, as I was getting to the, the edge of the joiner, holding it down, trying to maintain that edge, and because it was so heavy, just wanted to tip over. So as I was doing it, I had to kind of catch myself. Now, I love my joiner, but I only have about, because it's a combination machine, I have about five feet of support here on the table. Now, there are longer joiners out there. Some are six feet, some are eight feet and they'll give you a little more support, but you're still gonna have to set up an outfeed roller or something if you have a 12 foot board. So now here, basically, this is pine, it's very light. Now if this was oak or, or maple, the board is much harder to control. So if you wanna start here, you have the fence and you're trying to join this board. Now you're trying to hold this flat against the fence, flat against the infeed table, and it's tippy, right? So you can set up an infeed roller. Problem is with the infeed roller, they like to make the boards wander. I've tried it, trust me, they make the board go out, in, it's not controllable. Same thing if you put it on the outfeed side, the rollers will pull it in a direction you don't want it to go. And it's still very tippy here, right? So I'm very close to the blade as it is because I'm trying to get as much support as possible. I'm passing it through. So now I'm still in the safe zone right here, okay? It's not at the point where it wants to tip yet because I'm halfway through the board. Now as I start to get three quarters of the way through, now you can see the board wants to already start to lift up. And I'm, now it's starting to get heavier. Even though it's light pine, it's starting to pull up, right? So I'm trying to hold this down, forcing it down. And you're not supposed to be forcing the wood down because all you're doing is telegraphing um, imperfections in the board right to the blade on your joiner. So you're not really effectively getting a straight edge. So as I get to the end now, I have to make sure that I maintain it. And I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure down right now on the outfeed table to hold this down. Is if I'm off the table. If I just let it go, that's it. It's going to go right down. So if I slip at all, not only is it dangerous that the board can come up and hit me in the face, but I can fall and try to catch myself as a natural reaction and what's going to happen. Even if I have the blade guard in, which this is the blade guard here, so you have the blade guard like this, I can still get my hands underneath the blade guard and fall in. And I've seen people get their hands chopped right off on these things. There's actually a channel, I'm not sure, it's a, it's a builder, and these guys are professionals. And the guy lost all of his fingers to a joiner. And these things are dangerous. So if you have a board that's just maybe six, eight feet, even, I would go as far as to say, even eight and a half feet, it's absolutely no problem. This is a, this is a five and a half or a six foot board right here. You start right here, you pass it through, Get it to the outfit side, maintain, maintain. Now the weight is still not too much. Pass it through and perfect, no problem. So let's get over to the track saw and I'll show you how effective this can be and safer. All right, so before we get started with the jointing of the extremely large uh, boards, 10, 12 feet, 14 feet, things that are just too dangerous and wobbly to really do on the joiner. I need to get this out of the way. This is one of the barn beams. This one is a little more than 10 feet. If you look in here, these, what I call them squash blocks, they're really just like stabilizers or spacers, and that's gonna keep everything square. A couple of pocket screws in here. So th these are just gonna go in the center here, and that's going to maintain that five and a half inch spacing in between. So this way I can move it around and not worry about the, the miters actually being stressed. These are gonna come off later on because this has to go around a steel post. And this will then go and wrap onto it and get finished to close everything in. And then we can start with the top beams going across. So basically I have to do this in two parts. When I'm there, I have to really attach and then kind of finish the edges off. So not a problem. 
those are things you have to do. The biggest problem is going to be jointing those long boards and getting these miter folds perfect. You can't, if you don't start off with a straight edge, your miter folds are never going to be straight. And that's why when they're long like this, you can't run them through the table saw along the rip fence because they have those waves and the crowns in the board and um, there's cupping and twisting. And as you run it through, any imperfections in the edge of that board are just going to telegraph right into the table saw and the blade is going to follow those and then when you pull the board out and you go to fold up those miters to make that nice edge you're going to have a lot of gaps it's not going to line up you're not going to be able to close those miters so that's what we're going to do today we're going to work on making a straight edge on a board that's too long for your joiner so we're going to do that with a track so i'll show you how so here's the track setup i have them joined together you can see right here there's two separate pieces Okay, so 13 feet, six inches. So 13 and a half feet. You can use this to easily rip any 12 foot board down and get a perfect straight edge. Now, I have a sliding table saw. The problem is I only can rip a straight line on a piece that's just about uh, 68 to 70 inches. So here is the seam where the two tracks are joined. So since that's where I have perfect edges. Let me just loosen this up and show you how this works. And you just have to loosen up Allen keys a little bit. You don't have to loosen it too much. And I'm going to slide this right off. This is a track connector. Now you can buy it from DeWalt. DeWalt has it. But I chose to get it from a company called PowerTech, not sponsored, by the way. Just showing you what I used and that was because this track connector which does the same exact thing as the DeWalt one was half the price so it got good reviews I gave it a shot the way it works is you slide this into the bottom of the track where normally the track clamps would go and then you just kind of eyeball where it would be about halfway because you want to you want to join it equally on both sides so I'll put it in halfway, make sure it's straight, and as you tighten it up, what's going to happen is it'll bring it to the surface. Now I'm not tightening up the whole thing completely. I'm just snugging up the bolts, bringing it to where it needs to be. Now I'm going to take the other half of the track. Now remember the tracks are upside down. This is going to slide right into the other half. I'm going to join them together here. And once I get the seam perfect where I want it, make sure that it's touching on all sides. Now I'll snug this side up. I flip it over and now I have a 13 and a half foot straight edge. And so I found the perfect board for this application here and demonstration that we're going to do. So yes, I'm going to try to get this as perfect as possible. I think I got the right angle right there. You see how this board kind of goes in, then comes back out at the tail over there? This side, this belly's out. The crown is up on this one. So this one is going straight and then coming out and then curving back. So the board is like a banana. It's curved inwards here and outwards on the other side. You don't want to try to get the straight edge off of the inside crown. What you want to do is get from the edge here to the edge here and then just cut that straight line and take off basically this hump in the middle. That will give you the perfect straight edge without wasting a lot of material. Once you have that crown cut off and then you can either run it through the table saw at that point or you can move the track over and you can follow your lines there. So let's take the track and you don't have to make any pencil marks at this point. Now that you've established where your crown is on the board, all you need to do is line up one edge of the track on one end and get it to the edge of the track on this end. Here is the edge of the board just sticking out right past the edge of the zero clearance so that I know that I'm going to get this point cut off. Now, as you can see, see how much it's coming out right here? We got a, about a little more than a quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch crown coming out past this straight edge. 
Now, as we get back, you see how it tapers back down, tapers back down. Now it's disappearing and it's completely gone and in line with the straight edge here. There's nothing. We're gonna cut that whole crown right off and that's going to establish our perfect straight edge. So let's get the track saw set up and we're gonna do that right now. All right, a couple of important things. Make sure your track is in place. Make sure that your track saw is set to 90 degrees. Uh, if you're not familiar with the, the way a track saw works, uh, let me just explain it to you real quick. This just rides on this track here and you push down and the saw plunges in and then it rides along the track and then when you're done, you let the saw come back up. Very useful tool. Um, I've owned it for a long time. Uh, I can do a separate video on whether or not I really liked this model. Uh, there's probably a lot better models out there. I know the Festool is really good, but uh, price point wise, doesn't work for me right now. So um, maybe in the future, I do love Festool stuff, but uh, the Domino is about the only thing I own from them. So make sure you're hooked up to dust collection because this thing will spit out a ridiculous amount of sawdust. Hearing protection, eye protection, and a 95 dust mask uh, for the purposes of me talking in this video right now and a really good dust collection on this. I'm not wearing a mask. It's just gonna be one straight cut. It's not gonna be any dust at all. So I'm gonna start off the workpiece. One of the things I like to do, I'm gonna just drape this over my shoulder so it follows me as I go and doesn't get tangled up into the track. We completed the cut, and as you can see, here is the strip that we cut off. So let's just move this off to the side. Now that we got that out of the way, we'll just take the track and slide it off. And by the way, these things, they don't move. They have these rubber strips underneath. It really grips onto the wood. The crown is now gone. It's very hard for me to get this um, picked up by the lens. Let me put it down by my eye. I have a perfectly straight edge all the way through as best as it's going to get especially with connected tracks like that so the crown that was before coming out this way like a hump is completely gone so now what you would do is you could either one run this through your table saw if you have a, a good outfeed table make sure that you have support outside of the back of the saw otherwise this will just as you push it through if there's no outfeed table it'll just fall right off and it'll be just as bad as the joiner so what I would do now is from the edge that I cut straight, I want this to be five and a half, so I'm going to make a mark. Now I like to make a crow's foot. So basically it's just um, a swoop out and a swoop out so that it makes a V. So this way I can line the track up right in the center of this V here and know that I'm going to hit my mark. I'll make one right here in the middle of the board, five and a half. Come down to the other end. What I'm going to do is, since my saw is set up to cut in this direction here, and I want to stick with the same side that I've been using, I'm just going to rotate the board. Pull the track onto the board. And I'm going to line up my marks. And so I'm going to put the zero edge right in the center of that crow's foot that I made. And as I go down the board here, I'm going to push it into the crow's foot right there. And this one is just about perfect. Okay, this is the cutoff. Now, as you look down the cutoff here, it might be a little bit easier to see. We have a nice straight edge on this side, and the side that we cut off, you can see the curve. The crown is going completely that way. Now, I have five and a half on this end. That's exactly what I was aiming for, and I'm just going to run it along the edge. Five and a half, five and a half, five and a half. I'm still at five and a half. Still at five and a half, five and a half. And right in this spot here, I went over by a, maybe a 64th of an inch. It was not even enough to talk about. 
five and a half and five and a half. So this board is just like it was run through a table saw. If you look down these miter folds here, this is the, the first, this is the column. So this is a 10 foot long run right here. Now, pine, I'm using pine, but any lumber that you get that you're gonna uh, get from either a hardwood dealer or your local home centers, wherever you're gonna get it, they're not gonna have a perfectly straight edge on them. Because they just run this through the, the mill and the planer, the, their joiner, and it's just basically to take the material down to a nominal thickness. Okay, everybody. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me in the shop today. I hope you got something out of this. Don't forget, I'm going to put a link to all the tools that I use in the description box below. It's not going to cost you any more. It just supports the channel a little bit because I get a small piece of commission from the sale of the tool. Now, the tools are exactly the same price as you would pay if you went to the store and picked them up. So there's no extra there. So if you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. Also, if you want to support the channel, give the channel a thumbs up on the video because those likes will help circulate the videos. And I hope everybody is uh, hitting that subscribe button so if you like what you see make sure you come back and hit the picture of a notification bell that'll notify you every time I upload a video I'm trying to get these out now on a weekly basis trying to keep you guys in the loop of everything that I'm doing tips tricks the builds itself we got a lot of work to do you see get that I'm on a really big project right now this is gonna take me a few months there's so many different things I need to do in the house that I'm working on right now and there's gonna be a lot of awesome stuff barn doors um, those are sliding barn doors I should say those are gonna be made from scratch I'm milling the lumber myself is we want everything to stay straight we're doing the barn beams along the ceiling we're doing the post going around the column we're doing built-ins in one of the bedrooms we're gonna be doing a ton of stuff floating shelves that's all coming so uh, I hope you guys enjoy that stuff and I hope you all have a happy and healthy safe Christmas and happy new year if I can't get a video out next week depending on how work goes because everything is crazy right now around the holidays so enjoy your holiday whatever you celebrate whether it be Christmas or anything else enjoy with your family and stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.